Hello friends. Um, this is a little impromptu video um, about getting this ART-13 up and running. And the first step in that is to get this dynamotor functioning. Uh, the previous owner said that the dynamotor was working fine. I had, ha I had it opened up and in fact uh, everything turns very, very smoothly. Very little wear, actually almost no wear on the um, from the brushes on the you know metal bits that the, the brushes connect to. I don't know the, exactly the name for them. And so the first thing we've got to do is power up. This is a 28 volt dynamotor, uh, and I have a big honking 100 amp hour 28 volt uh, lithium style battery uh, that I'll connect it to, and also have a DC uh, a power supply, 30 amp power supply to keep that thing charged. So uh, the first thing is we've got to do is to get, um, this is where the 28-volt the uh, connection comes in. This is where it connects to the radio. Fortunately, I do have the not just the connectors for the, this part of, of it, but I have an entire cable assembly that came from the previous owner, and the previous, previous owner probably made it. Uh, and so I had to, I contacted, I got this, um, this is the mating connector. Uh, I got this from uh, Fair Radio in Lima, Ohio, and this just connects in like so with a little bit of pressure. However, uh, the one from Lima came with this Gigundo back shell, and um, you know it, it would go on here. Normally, not really a problem with the back shell, but I want to use. Uh, I'm going to show you the other other part of this. I'm going to use these number eight wires. This dynamotor, they say, can take up to 250, can consume up to 250 amps for a very, very brief period of time uh, as the motor comes up, uh, you know, starts up from a dead stop. It's a very, very, um, you know, very, sh uh, sh like a short, very low impedance until it spins up. So I got a, a couple of these, um, these uh, cable connectors. These are the, the SB50. I think these are the 50 amp. Uh, 50 amp power poles. I think they're 50 amps or 75. I forget exactly what they are. Um, 50 amp, 50 amp power poles, which should be enough for the you know the the very brief amount of time that there's higher than 50 amps being drawn. Um, this this is probably plenty fine, and then a steady state of I think of about uh, I don't remember what they said uh, 20 amps, 30 amps, something like that, steady state. And so these come with number eight wires, which I think uh, I got these on eBay, by the way, or somewhere. And they're just they're just very convenient to not have to sit there and make uh, uh, these these heavy gauge cables. This, I think, was like, I don't know, 12, 10 bucks or something, 12 bucks, something to that effect. Free shipping. You know how these things are. Um, and because of so these these number eight wires, the problem getting back to the back shell is that the clamp that the strain relief clamp. Uh, it, it cannot close down enough to provide any kind of strain relief. So, because this, this clamp is really designed for like a much bigger, like a BX cable or something. Um, I don't know what, but much bigger. So, with the help of um, Robert Downs, uh, he is also a well known um, collector and provider of, uh, you know, a pre, uh, in a World War II era stuff. I was able to get from him this proper, pro more properly sized back shell. And this is a winner, winner, chicken dinner situation here. Uh, really plenty of strain relief. Uh, as you can see, it's just infinitely smaller. I guess not infinitely, but a lot smaller. Uh, and so, yeah, I'll be able to make this work no problem. And this will, of course, sit in the back uh, here. And so my next step here is to, sorry for all the bad video stuff. The next step here is to do some wire stripping, uh, prepare the connector here for soldering. And this is big. It's going to take a lot of heat uh, to get these things pro done properly and a lot of some cleaning. This is a used connector. Probably can't see too well, but it's a used connector. So I'm going to do some good cleaning. Um, I'm going to preload a little slug of solder into each of these. So that when I put this in, it's already, and I'll, tin, I'll t of course, tin these. Uh, probably will have to use a little flux in here. I'm generally not a flux user. I know a lot of people swear by it and use it on, you know, every uh, joint that they that they make or smoke. 
Uh, but I do not. I, I almost never found a need for it, except in the case when you've got sort of older used connectors uh, that might need a little extra help. Uh, so uh, that's that's what I'll do next. All right. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do here, uh, remember to always put the back shell on uh, before you assemble this connector. Uh, it's very easy to forget to do that and really be uh, in a world of trouble. Uh, having to probably then dismantle the whole thing and start over. So uh, the first thing we're going to do here is uh, cut uh, the insulation. I've chosen to use a little uh, razor blade to do that. Uh, you got to give yourself a little, little bit of space to, to work with this. I've got this on three times the speed so we don't have to watch this in real time. So this is fairly thick insulator so I use the uh, I use the, the razor blade and then I use this traditional uh, stripper to uh, pull out the, um, the or pull off the insulation. Make sure the strands are all together and we just do a test fit now to make sure uh, they will fit into the solder cups of the connector. All right, so I'm going through my drawer of, uh, of uh, heat shrink. And at first, I'm trying this black stuff, uh, which I don't remember the size. I figured that was going to be good enough. It seems to fit okay on the on the wire, but a little too tight on the solder cup itself. And since sometimes these things can shrink a little bit when you're soldering uh, the connection, uh, I decided it was going to be too small. So I'm trying now this yellow stuff, and I wanted to shrink it to its most shrunken to, to see, to make sure, because it's big. It's much bigger than the black and just to make sure that it, it will shrink small enough to still be useful. And so I confirm that it does shrink enough uh, to be useful, and I think I'm doing, gonna do the, do the exact same uh, test here for the red. Basically, I wanna find, a, 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 find some heat shrink that uh, will work well for this project. Okay, so uh, the other thing you gotta do is really give yourself some space. Uh, this heat shrink, if, it, if you leave it too close to the solder joint, it can sometimes start to, sh actual, to start shrinking um, prematurely when you're not ready for it. And I've had that happen to me before. So you gotta give yourself plenty of room to have that, um, to have that uh, away from the heat of the solder joint. Uh, the other thing I'm doing is I'm I'm testing. I want to have an overall outside heat shrink, uh, and I'm also testing this to see that it shrinks down small enough to be uh, useful, and it does. So I'm going to use a piece of that as well. So here's the piece that I'll use for the outside. I have to remember to put that on. pushing everything back so that nothing, I don't want anything to start shrinking before it's time. Now, in, in, originally, initially, I start, uh, I, I try to use this uh, small 40 watt uh, temperature controlled uh, um, HACO, HACO, HACO soldering iron. And this is not really a successful uh, attempt. It's just not enough heat and not, not enough thermal mass on the on the soldering iron uh, to really do the job, but at least I'll use it for a little bit and get the uh, get the conductors uh, tinned, which of course is an important thing to do, especially on large connectors. Okay, so I eventually give up. This is this is just a, uh, a bad idea to begin with, and uh, I decide to put that away and go for a real soldering gun. So I got I don't use it that often, so I have to go to a little searching for it. Okay. Uh, now we got the right tool for the job. Even has a little LED. This is an old Radio Shack uh, item. I don't know how long I've had it. Long time. Okay. You wait. And you got to wait, of course, till the it heats up. And now, of course, it, it just makes short work of getting these wires tinned and clean. You don't want you don't want a lot of stray solder or solder blobs. You want them clean 
And here you can see I'm getting rid of any uh, stray strands of copper because um, that would be bad. All right, next thing is I'd already cleaned. I think I, let's see if I show cleaning this. Oh, don't forget that, that ring. That's very important also to put on. I've made connectors where I've forgotten to put the, the ring on and had to redo them all. Okay, so here we are cleaning them. So I found some pipe cleaner and I'm just going through and cleaning them pretty well. Um, I think I had dipped these pipe cleaners in some isopropyl. I, I don't exactly recall what I did here. It's a couple of months ago that I worked on this, or maybe a, one month ago. Uh, then a little file, just to, to make sure I've got some fresh metal, clean metal, for the solder to adhere to. Uh, blow it out, make sure there's no bits and pieces. All right. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to put a little bit of this flux uh, on uh, because these are older uh, connections, older uh, solder cups that have been used. So just take a little and just a little bit. I don't over, don't want to overdo it. Uh, just paint it in there. Okay, a review of the schematic to make sure I get the positive and the negative right. You can see pins one and three, that might have been a little too fast. Pin one and three uh, go to ground, so that's going to be my black uh, connector. Pin one, I think, is the small one, which we're not even going to bother to use. I don't think there's any, uh, any reason to use it. Now, uh, as I mentioned before, I don't want these heat shrinks, uh, the shrink tubing to shrink prematurely. So I use a little uh, electrical tape to hold them out of the way because the, you don't want them sliding down onto a hot uh, a connect, uh, connection contact and then shrinking on you. So I put them out of the way, I tape them up and keep them out of the way. Now, the next important thing I do here is make these little solder slugs. This is a technique I developed. I don't know if I learned it from someone, probably. Of course, the, uh, that's a bad idea. Let's do that again. Uh, what you do is I just wrap around something small like a nail uh, some uh, very, very small bits of solder just to make a little slug, like a little, I don't know what you want to call it. You can see it right there. Make sure it's small enough diameter. Clean it up to make sure it's round and fits. And I just push that into the solder uh, cup. You may not be able to see all of this because my fingers are in the way. So again, let it heat up. You can see, I uh, turned the light off so you can see, so just so it gets a little bit cherry red. Uh, you always want to keep it tinned. And then what I do, I stick it on there and then I heat it all up. And as that slug that I put in there melts, I push the wire down into the solder cup and make sure that there's a good flow of solder between the wire and the cup. Making another slug for the, for the positive connection. Stick that in there, push it down. Make sure everything's clean and neat and tidy. Let that glow. And there it is. Uh, there it is, starting to glow red. Keep it clean. And you'll see again as it heats up, as that uh, as that slug melts. The cable, the wire will push down into the solder cup and should make a good, very good connection that way. Now a little bit of cleaning up here, maybe flowing a little extra solder. Um, you just want the best job possible. Now I'm feeling it to see uh, how hot it is and make sure it's not going to risk my, uh, heat sh my shrink tubing uh, starting to shrink. Very easy to overheat this whole environment here when you've got a big 150 watt iron or whatever that is um, and uh, lots of solder, heavy, you know, thick mass, heavy thermal load with these contacts and the wires uh, and you just really want to um, make sure things don't overheat. Now see there's a bad blob and that's a little bit embarrassing. You see it's, uh, in fact, it's uh, touching the edge. So here's my Heiko 808 desolder. It makes super easy work out of it. Make sure it's hot and just suck it up. No more solder wicks and, and uh, hand pumps, uh, spring-loaded pumps. Just, just makes easy work of, of electronic repair. All right, now things seem to are a little cooler and it's time to 
get the heat shrink down in place. Oh, first things first, make sure that there's no short. Uh, with a with a, a hundred amp hour uh, lithium battery providing for this, and something like two thousand amp uh, continuous uh, uh, discharge rate, you want to make sure that there are no uh, no problems here. Okay, so uh, we're pushing down the heat shrink. Hello, some some superb camera work by me. All right, and um, while I'm doing this, I'm trying to push, make sure that the uh, it doesn't rise up. You want it all the way down to the base of the contact, base of the solder cup. You'll also notice this has the glue inside. I, I, real, I didn't realize I had picked the the type of heat shrink that had the glue inside. I figure out it's called sealing. I guess it, it produces a waterproof seal. Uh, not necessary in this application at all, but uh, I've sort of forgotten it. All right, and I put down the... Um, the ring, and now to shrink the uh, the overall outside tube, and this is just for a little extra, um, uh, you know, abra abrasion resistance, uh, and just to dress it up a little bit. All right, and this thing get does get hot. The metal uh, the metal connector gets hot. Gotta let it see. I'm cooling it off with a little spray. Ooh, that's hot. All right, we're gonna loosen up the back shell uh, cable clamp. All right, it's a little tight actually, again, because I had. Uh, I probably should not have used the the heat shrink with the uh, the the glue inside of it. It made it thicker than I was anticipating. Uh, so yeah, it was a little difficult to to get it back together, believe it or not. But a little uh, persuasion from uh, a little persuasion from a hammer, and all was good. All right, so um, we're assembling the connector now putting the screws into the back shell, making sure it's all lined up. Sometimes requires a little bit of um, persuasion, as I mentioned. And just, it was a little too tight in. I had a, the, the screws weren't lining up, so I had a separate a bit. Yeah, just trying to get everything aligned. There are three holes in the back shell that have to align to the three holes in the connector body. And uh, I think I just tightened them too, too close together so that the screws wouldn't fit. Here we go. Now, now things are, are lining up better. And we're finally putting on the, the cable clamp. There it is. Now you'll notice the uh, the, the the black. I, I didn't like it. it. Was it was just too thick, and it wasn't going to allow the connector to uh, the body to go on there. So I ended up removing it, which is fine, as you can see. And that's it. Uh, it all connects up, works well, looks good. In the end, I do, uh, I will redo uh, the overall uh, heat shrink on this, but I'm going to put it on from the other side. I don't know. I don't think I have any video showing that. Okay, so there you have it. So uh, what a bit of an ordeal. Uh, apparently, these shrink wraps that have the glue inside them are so much thicker that I had not planned for it properly. In fact, I was planning to use just regular 
uh, shrink wrap, but I had this other stuff just, I don't know, just jumped out at me and I decided to use it last minute. And so it made getting the back shell extremely hard to get onto the body of the connector. But we did it. Um, and uh, I think it's pretty robust. Here it is. Uh, let me see if I could just back up a wee bit. Oops, wrong direction. Uh, so we've got a nice connection here now. And on the other side, I didn't haven't shown this yet, but this is another cable. Let's move this out all out of the way. Make some room. So this cable is very similar to the other, um, ex except it's got these, uh, I don't know, 3 8 studs or 5 16th, I'm not sure what this is, studs probably, um, that will go onto the battery. And it also has this very convenient um, uh, fuse built into it. And in this case, I've got a, if you can see that, a 100 amp fuse which hopefully is, will, will last long enough for the motor to spin up. So this will go on the battery side, and when I wanna connect this up, voila. Whoops. <laughs> uh, there it is. So yeah, hopefully the next video will be uh, an attempt to spin this thing up and see how it works. Thanks a lot. Hope you enjoyed it.